Hello, welcome to the first video of the statistics video textbook. So um, this is an open educational resource um, version of a textbook where instead of the textbook being uh, written, it's in videos. And you should be able to find the link to the whole, um, whole textbook down in the uh, description down below um, in YouTube. And um, overall, uh, what, this, uh, what this covers is the, um, the content for an introductory statistics course in psychology. So that's a little bit different from the statistics you might get in a math program, for example, because uh, they'll probably talk a lot more about conditional probabilities, but we won't do that here because psychologists uh, don't use those very often. Um, what we'll do in this class is we'll talk about you know, variables and descriptive statistics, um, distributions and the logic of inferential tests or, inferen or statistical inference. And that's the whole first half of this class. The second half of the class is um, introducing the standard inferential tests that are used by psychologists, so t-tests, uh, ANOVAs, correlation, uh, regression, and we'll talk just a little bit at the end about non-parametric tests, um, and in particular we'll talk about chi-square tests. As somebody taking an introductory statistics class, you might wonder why statistics are important. And they're important primarily uh, in two ways. One is that we're all consumers of claims that are based on statistics. So like scientific research all uses statistics. And so when you're reading about a claim that's made uh, based on numbers, the more you understand statistics, the better you're able to understand and critically evaluate uh, a claim that's made based on data or statistics. The other main uh, use for statistics is um, by producers of um, knowledge. So this is folks that are like research scientists or um, people that are collecting data about uh, polls or anything like that. Um, so I'm a, I'm a research scientist and I use statistics all the, all the time. And what we do is when we collect our data, we need to make sense of that data. And that's what statistics do for us. They help us summarize and describe our data, but also they kind of give us um, insight into what kind of claims we can make about the world based on our data. Uh, and so the, these are the two main uh, the kind of perspectives where uh, you might use statistics in your life. So to tell you a little bit about myself, my name is Brian Koenig, and I have a PhD from New Mexico State University in social psychology. Um, I'm an assistant professor of psychology at Southern Utah uh, University down in Cedar City, Utah. In this video, I'll introduce the two main kinds of statistics, descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. And then I'll um, try to uh, clarify what those mean a little bit more by talking about populations and samples. So at a very broad level, Statistics are ways of making sense of numbers. And there's two main kinds of statistics. One kind is called descriptive statistics. And these are numbers that summarize data sets. Uh, so for example, if you um, have the heights of all American uh, adult women and you calculated the average, 
That would be a descriptive statistic that summarizes the average height of that data set. So for example, um, the average height of American women. The other main kind of statistic is called inferential statistics. And these are uh, mathematical you know, procedures that uh, people have figured out that allow researchers to make decisions or inferences about populations uh, based on sample data, sample data. So for example, if you um, are trying to figure out how tall uh, female students are at Southern Utah University, you could get a sample the sample size of 30, you could measure the height of 30 SUU women. And that sample's average height SU women's height their average you could use this average as your best guess from this sample uh, you could use that as your best guess at the at the overall average for all SU women in the population, even though you didn't measure all of those women, you just measured a subsample or you know, a sample of the population, and that would be a way to guess at that population. So that'd be an inferential statistical approach, and that's called a point estimate. Two critical ideas in statistics are uh, a population and a sample. So a population is um, everybody. you want to know about or make a claim about. Uh, so for example, I might want to know um, the average height of American women. In that case, the population is American women. And if somehow I have a way to measure the height of every American woman, I would have done a census, just like the government does a census every few years. Um, they're measuring everybody in the population. Most researchers, though, are unable to measure everybody that they're interested in. And so us researchers, we get stuck working with samples. Um, so these samples are subsets of the population. that are in our study. Uh, so for example, we might be interested in um, the average height of American women, but because we're unable to access a large population of American women, we might end up with a sample of 30 um, Southern Utah University undergraduate women. And your intuitions might be that this sample maybe isn't really representative of this population. And you would be right. And the relation between the sample and the population turns out to be uh, a really important issue. Um, but for now, I just wanted to introduce these topics of uh, population and samples. So now I want to try to illustrate some of these ideas that I've been talking about. So let's say we want to know um, the average height of American women. So we want to know about a population. And I'll, um, I'll draw some circles, or put some dots on here. And let's say that those are 
all of the individuals in the population. So, you know, just bear with me here. Clearly, that's not all American women. Uh, and this is just that all American women and, and how tall they are. And what we want to know is their average height. And so mu is the symbol for a population mean, a population average. So this is what we want to know. We want to know the population mean for uh, American women's height. American women's height. But when you're doing research, you almost never are able to measure everybody in the population to do a census. And usually, you end up working with a sample. right? And so if these are all the people in the population, um, what we have is going to be a sample. Ideally, the way that you'll get individuals from the population into your sample will be with random selection. It's also called random sampling. And all of the random sampling or random selection means is that each person in the population has the same chances as every other person in the population as being in your sample. So let's just say I'm randomly picking these folks. Um, and that's how we get our sample is just each person has the same chance. And we end up having those folks coming over and being in our, in our sample. And was, I remind, remember that a, a sample is just a, a subset of the population uh, that are in your sample. So if this is the population and we've got a random sample, let's just say that our sample has 30 um, American uh, women in it. So we'll just say that this is 30 individuals. And then what we can do is we can measure the height of each of those 30 people that are in our study. And that average height is going to be called X bar. Um, so X with a line over the top, that is a sample mean or average. So there's a different symbol for the populi population mean compared to the sample mean. And notice that both of these are means, and therefore they're both descriptive statistics, because this is an average that's summarizing this data set. And this is an average that's summarizing this data set, although we don't actually have access to that whole data set. So remember, we're interested in the population mean, but we don't have all of the people in, our, in the population in our sample. We just have this, this subset of the population. So what we do as researchers is we use the, the information in our sample, and we make decisions or guesses or inferences about the population based on our sample data. And this is statistical inference. And all of the inferential, inferential statistical tests we talk about in the class are going to allow us to work with our sample data and make inferences about populations based on that data. If all that you're doing is taking a sample mean and using that as your best guess at the population mean, which is reasonable if you don't have any other information about that population mean. Uh, that statistical inference process is called a point estimate. And it's just a way to, to, to guess at a population uh, parameter, or population mean in this case, uh, given your sample data. Um, and that's pretty common, although most of the inferential tests we'll talk about in this class are not, are not quite like that. Uh, but they do use sample data to make inferences about populations. And another thing I want to point out is that You'll notice that these um, symbols for samples, like X bar, uh, these are usually Roman letters, which are just regular English letters that you're most you're familiar with already. And most most of the time, the symbols for populations, like mu here, are going to be Greek letters. There's a few exceptions to this, but as a, as a rule of thumb, it's pretty much uh, usually the case that Roman letters are sample uh, symbols and Greek letters are uh, population symbols. So to recap, researchers always want to know things about populations. But we almost never have access to everybody in a population. We can't do a census. So we'll get a sample that's a subset of the population, and that's who's in our study. And we'll measure those folks, or do experiments with them, or whatever. 
Um, and then what we'll do is we'll use inferential statistical processes to make inferences from samples to populations. And, and this is the stuff that you'll read about uh, in the newspaper or in research uh, articles as the, the result of this statistical inference process, which is really the main topic of this whole class.